Hello friends. Here Professor Anil Derekar. I am a teacher of engineering chemistry uh, from Gulipati College of Engineering. Today uh, we are going to study IR spectroscopy. First we will see spectroscopy means what? Spectroscopy means uh, interaction of radiation with matter. Interaction of radiation with matter. The time when we expose chemical in front of radiation. We expose chemical in front of radiation. Chemical absorb radiation. Chemical absorb radiation and response given by chemical is recorded in the form of a spectrum. For example, the time when anybody met with an accident on the road, what we are doing? We are simply taking that fellow to the hospital. See, let me tell you, doctor not giving injection directly. What he doing? First, he examining that patient. As per his complaint, he taking an X-ray of that particular patient. As per his complaint, particular organ complaint, he taking an X-ray of that patient. Right? X-ray means what? Ray of radiation is there. Right? Organ that is a matter. So that organ is exposed in front of X-ray. So here, interaction takes place between the X-ray and that organ, right? So here, organ giving response to that radiation, X-ray radiation, and that response recorded in the form of a one graph or one picture, right? And we are getting print of our X-ray. Likewise, here I am taking in spectroscopy, chemical exposed in front of radiation, chemical absorbed radiation, which all chemical giving response to the radiation, and that response is recorded in the form of one graph or spectra, it's called as a spectroscopy. So spectroscopy is a very important uh, part of chemistry because this one helps us to get idea about chemical compounds, their structure, their arrangement. So about structural information of any chemical compound, we are able to find by taking help of spectroscopy. So in spectroscopy, UV visible spectroscopy is there, IR spectroscopy is there, H1 NMR spectroscopy is there, C13 NMR spectroscopy is there. So out of all techniques, in your syllabus, UV visible and IR spectroscopy is there. So today, we are going to talk about IR spectroscopy. Now, what is the speciality of IR spectroscopy? By using the IR spectroscopy, you are able to find which type of functionality present in compound. This functional group information we able to get by taking help of IR spectroscopy. I am talking about functional group. Functional group information we will get by using a IR spectroscopy. Now first we will talk about principle of IR spectroscopy. What is the principle of IR spectroscopy? You know number of atoms present in molecule. So here that atoms are not stationary. Atoms are not stationary. They otherwise vibrate, rotate, or move from one place to another place. Here I am saying atoms are not stationary. They always vibrate. They always rotate from one place to another place. If you, if you talk about vibration, atoms vibrate in number of ways. Atoms vibrate in number of ways. Each way of vibration requires specific amount of energy. Each vibration requires specific amount of energy. See, the time when chemical is exposed in front of radiation, it absorbs energy from radiation and then it excited to higher vibrational energy level. It excited to higher vibrational energy level. In IR spectroscopy, here we are going to see types of molecular vibrations. Types of molecular vibrations. So if you see any molecule, covalent bond present between two atoms. Which bond present between two atoms? Covalent bond present between two atoms. Now that covalent bond is not rigid. Covalent bond is not rigid. That covalent bond is a flexible, elastic. You can say it is in the form of a spring. Covalent bond is in the form of a spring. Means we can stretch it, we can contract it, right? Or that bond can bend. So here, molecular vibrations classified into two types. In that first one, stretching vibrations. And after this one, we will study second one that is the bending vibrations. 
Now let us see first one. Stretching vibrations. Now what is meant by stretching vibration? Now to characterize is stretching vibration take place. Now stretching vibrations characterized by change in internuclear distance between two atoms. What I am saying? Stretching vibrations characterized by how to characterize? By change in internuclear distance means distance between two atoms changes. That is what? Stretching vibrations. So here in stretching vibrations, distance between two atoms either increases or decreases. Distance between two atoms either increases or decreases. Stretching vibration classified into two types. In that first one is a symmetric stretching and second one asymmetric stretching. Now let us see first one. Symmetric stretching. Now what is mean by symmetric stretching? In symmetric stretching, bond length either increases or decreases. Here I am saying in symmetric stretching, bond length either increases or decreases. Means distance between two atoms increases or decreases. Symmetrical. That increase or decrease is symmetrical in same direction. In same direction, that is called as a symmetrical stretch. You observe this diagram, you will get clear cut idea. Here, distance between these two atoms, as well as distance between two atoms, same. So stretching is symmetrical. Symmetrical, right? Means here is in a same direction. Is in a same direction. Okay. In case of second type, that is an asymmetric stretching. In asymmetric stretching, length of one bond increases, right? while another bond length decreases. In asymmetric stretching, length of one bond increases and other bond decreases. Means direction or you can say movement of atoms in opposite direction. Right? This one move up, this one move down. This one move up, this one move down down, right? Means one bond length increases, second bond length decreases. That is how asymmetric stretching. Okay students, just now I explained symmetrical stretching and second one asymmetrical stretching. Now I will show you demonstration that how symmetrical stretching takes place and how asymmetrical stretching takes place. For example, uh, these are the two hydrogen atoms and this one oxygen atom. Now see. Symmetrical stretching, as I said, bond length increases or decreases symmetrically. Bond length increases or decreases symmetrically. So this is what? This is a symmetrical stretching. Are you getting? Bond length increases or decreases symmetrically. So this is called as a symmetrical stretching. In second case, Second type, we studied asymmetrical stretching. So asymmetrical stretching, one bond length, means length of one bond increases, second one decreases. Length of one bond increases, second one decreases. So this is a asymmetrical stretching. Are you getting? One bond length increases, other bond length decreases. Okay? This is a asymmetrical stretching. Now, second type of vibrations we are going to see. First one we studied, that is the stretching vibrations. Now, second one we are going to see, that is the bending vibrations. Now, how to characterize the bending vibrations take place? See, in case of stretching vibrations, we study internuclear distance changes. Internuclear distance changes. Now, in case of bending vibrations, Bending vibrations characterized by change in bond angle. Change in bond angle in case of bending vibration. So, if bending takes place, position of atoms changes with respect to original position. In case of bending, position of atoms changes with respect to original position. So, because of that, it classified into four types. In that first one, seasoning vibrations, then rocking vibrations, then third one, wagging, and last one, twisting. 
Now, out of four, seasoning and rocking take place in plane. These two vibrations taking place in plane, while wagging and twisting take place out of the plane. So, first two in plane and last two out of plane. Let us see one by one. First one, scissoring. Now, you know scissor, how it works. Now, scissoring. In case of scissoring, atoms move. Atoms move in opposite direction. If you see this one, this one atom moving clockwise direction, this one moving anti-clockwise direction. So, atoms move in opposite direction. Means, you can say, towards each other or away from each other. Toward each other or away from each other. In a scissoring, bond angle decreases. In scissoring, bond angle decreases. Okay. Second one, rocking. Rocking vibration. Rocking chair, everyone know rocking chair. Now, in rocking of vibrations, atoms move in same direction. In rocking vibrations, atoms move in same direction. Bond angle remains a constant. In scissoring, I say, bond angle decreases. In case of rocking, bond angle remains a constant because atoms moving in same direction. Atoms moving in same direction. As you know, rocking chair. Forward, backward. Forward, backward. Okay? This is a rocking. So, try to understand the difference between scissoring and rocking. In scissoring, atoms move in opposite direction. Direction is opposite. In case of rocking, movement of atoms in same direction. So, atoms moving in same direction. Here, atoms moving in opposite direction. Let us see one uh, demo. Uh, let us see demo of scissoring. The how scissoring takes place. Now, so, these are the two atoms, right, connected to the central atom. Now, in scissoring, as I said, movement of atoms in opposite direction. Movement of atoms in opposite direction. This one moving up clockwise. This one moving up anticlockwise. So here, movement of atoms take place in opposite direction. Towards each other or away from each other. Towards each other or goes away from each other. If you observe bond angle, if you observe bond angle between these bonds, bond angle decreases. In scissoring, bond angle decreases. Now let us see uh, rocking. In case of rocking vibrations, both atoms move in same direction, like this. Both atoms move in same direction. Direction is same. Are you getting? Both atoms move in same direction. If you observe bond angle, bond angle remain constant. In case of rocking, bond angle remain constant. Simply, atoms moving forward or backward. Forward or backward. So, this is the rocking. Right? So, here, we studied scissoring and rocking. Scissoring, movement of atoms in opposite direction towards each other or away from each other. In rocking, both atoms move in same direction, forward, backward, forward, backward. Now these two vibrations taking place in the plane, in the plane. See here, just now we studied scissoring and rocking, these two taking place in the plane. Now remaining two we are going to see in that second last wagging and last one twisting. These two taking place out of the plane, out of the plane. Now see, one by one we will see. First one is the wagging. Dynamic presentation in front of you. Wagging means what? Both atoms, both atoms with respect to central atom go up in the plane, go up in the plane or both atoms go down in the plane. Are you getting? I am talking about wagging. In case of wagging, both atoms go up in the plane or both atoms go down in the plane. That is called as a wagging. The last one, twisting. Twisting word itself tells you. In case of twisting vibrations, one atom with respect to center, just consider this a center. So one 
atom go up, second atom go down. With respect to central atom, try to understand. One atom go up, second go down. So one up, second down. That is called as a twist, like this. Up, down, up, down. So this is all twisting. Dynamatic presentation, if you see here, I say both atoms here you have to show positive charge because both atoms simultaneously go up or go down. That's why positive charge at both atoms. In twisting, at one atom negative charge you have to show and second atom you have to show positive charge. Why negative and positive? Because positive negative atom move up, up the plane and second atom move down the plane. Up the plane, down the plane. Up the plane, down the plane. Okay, uh, let us see a uh, demo. You can say demonstration of wagging and twisting. For example, this is our molecule. As I am saying, this molecule is in the plane. These are the two atoms, right? Linked to central atom. Now, in case of wagging, both atoms move up in the plane or both atoms move down the plane. Are you getting? This is in the plane, both atoms go up the plane or both atoms move down the plane. So this is all wagging. This is a wagging. Now, last one we are going to see that is the twisting. In case of twisting, one atom move above the plane while second move down the plane. So one molecule up the plane, second molecule move down the plane. You can say up down. This is a twisting. Are you getting? Here I said one move up the plane, second move down the plane. So up down. Up down. Up down. This is a twisting. Now let us uh, uh, take a revision of all types of bending vibrations. First one we studied, that is a scissoring. In scissoring, we studied both atoms move in opposite direction, bond angle decreases. Both atoms move in opposite direction, bond angle decreases. Towards each other, away from each other. So this is all scissoring. Second one we studied, rocking. In case of rocking, both atoms move in same direction. Both atoms move in same direction. Bond angle remain constant. So this is rocking. Backward, forward. Backward, forward. This is what? Rocking. Now, third one is the wagging. This molecule is in the plane. In wagging, both atoms move up the plane or both atoms move down the plane. Okay, up, down. This is the wagging. And last one that is the twisting. In twisting, one atom go up, second go down. I said in twisting, one atom go up the plane, second down the plane. So that is up, down, up, down, up, down. This is a twisting. Okay, so today in our lecture we studied IR spectroscopy. In that first point we covered that is the uh, types of molecular vibrations. In that we studied stretching vibrations, second one bending vibrations. In stretching vibrations, we studied symmetric stretching and asymmetric stretching. In bond angle in bond length increases or decreases symmetrically, and in case of asymmetric stretching, one bond length increases, second one decreases. In bending vibrations, bond angle changes. In that we studied scissoring, rocking, wagging, and twisting. Scissoring, rocking take place in the plane and here wagging and twisting take place out of the plane. My dear students, please subscribe my YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching my video.